Hello and welcome to Jingles Hell. We're going to be laddering today with uh, Hunter. Swearing a lot at myself because, you know, that's what you do when you're miserable at this game. So, without any real chattering, let's just get into it and see what we can do. Alright, what do we got here? Alright, it's a mirror match. We absolutely despise this entire hand. Uh, the Mad Scientist is the closest to a playable card, but this particular deck is fairly mechy, so that's more like it. And when I say fairly mechy, I mean it's just I a mech hunter deck. Um, <clears throat> I have no idea how good this really is, but I've wanted to tool around with it, and that's what I'm doing today. I'm tooling around with it because I need to climb the ladder, and this is at least fairly aggressive, so what's the worst can happen, right? Especially right now, uh, brand new season, the ladder is a fairly aggressive sort of place, so... Let's see what our opponent's about to drop on us. If he's gonna do anything, maybe we're just gonna have him no show. No, he's coining something. I am the dancing master. Okay. I was not expecting to see a fencing coach. I will admit that happily. Um. Thinking, I probably just want to quick shot the fencing coach and no. I wonder. Keep going to the face, keep him on the back foot, or I can possibly mad scientist. Oh, yeah, I think I'm gonna mad scientist clockwork no. Go to the face. He has to pop the divine shield to do anything about the Noyatron, and then we can uh, drop eagle horn, pop our mad scientist just keep going straight to the dome as fast as possible. Just put him way on the back foot. <clears throat> Alright. It's gonna be worth killing off that Timberwolf. Just because Timberwolf. So we'll go ahead and swing into that. Clean up his crocolisk. Trade off that. Get out of freezing trap. And yeah, we're just gonna keep bashing him in the face as much as we physically can. We've already got a fairly strong damage lead. And oh, I'm just gonna keep it there. That did not do what he wanted it to. Liak is accomplishing basically nothing for him, so... Uh, it might be worth trading something into Liak, except I'm not entirely convinced I care. I've got six damage on the board. Yeah, let's just... Keep going to the face, make him do things... I'll show them. I'll show them all. Yeah. I'll you. Keep going to the face. Make him make decisions. If he attacks him with anything, this freezing trap is going to pop, and then we're pretty much clear to just rush to the dome and finish him down. We'll have a spare charge in case he drops anything we care about. I mean, as it stands right now, I've got lethal in hand and on the board, so... Alright. So 
So right now I've got Weasel. After I kill off his bear, assuming he doesn't have another taunt, he's just dead. Yeah, so he's severely dead. shots left over, and that's, yeah, that's all she wrote. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we'll just keep on going, get into game two. See if we can't get somewhere for the season at a reasonable pace. I mean, this deck is not exciting, but it's just about trying to ladder up right now. I can play, once I get past the weird mixture of aggro, uh, all sorts of random aggro, meta decks, and random BS of the low ranks, then I can start taking, I can start looking at decks that aren't just beat face. Alright, and we've got a perfectly acceptable curve again, so, yeah. Alright. Alright. I can fix anything. I mean, that's first three turns pretty much set in stone unless something crazy comes up. And we're going to make him react to us, which is right where we want to be. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming he's freeze. Lots and lots of freeze. Lots and lots of spells. Yep. I'm gonna see some flame wakers sometime in the near future, but don't particularly care that much. Well, not too near, but he's gonna get some sort of board presence down. Yeah, about that. Not generally big on spam bots. Uh, I'll fix you. Job done. And just keep the same old same going. Crush him with bodies. At some point, he's going to start throwing some sort of AoE at us. Or burn or something. I mean, he's got to do something. Very near future. <clears throat> I wonder. Mind if I roll knee? And I don't think that's the something he needed to do. I'm guessing he's hoping for a Doomsayer off of this Shredder. That's definitely not a doomsayer. Alright, so keep going to the dome. And we'll just drop a freezing trap. Because, frankly, we don't care. We've got a couple of bodies to drop if he somehow does the thing we care about. And we've got, yeah, lethal in two turns. So this is actually working out fairly reasonably. Just throwing mechs at people. Go figure. Turns out throwing bodies at people kills them. match coming up. Rexa versus Jane. Another mage. <coughs> you asked for it. Let the hunt begin. And just get some No, this entire hand is trash. Way too expensive. We want one and two drops, not four drops. Okay, well there's a one drop. Hopefully we see a mech warper.
That's also not a mech warper, but we can clockwork. We can potentially coin into an animal companion next turn if in hopes of getting something that doesn't suck. That's worst case. Uh. Alright, so I think we just go ahead and coin out a spider tank in case that animal companion is a Leoc. Get some value out of it. <coughs> and then we can uh, turn four, drop a Yeti or a Shredder. So, companion, and that's why we did that. Of course, it would have also been Leoc last turn, because then it would have been really bad, and we would have regretted it and hated ourselves. I'm surprised it was Leoc this turn, actually. It was still the correct play, just making sure my... keeping my options open, but, you know. Alright. I don't necessarily hate that. Uh, here we just drop a Shredder. It's already used a Frost Bolt, and Shredder is just a little bit better than Mechanical Yeti. Thanks to that extra body, so. Go that route. Next turn we can. Secret Keeper. Okay, he's got a torch. Okay, that's. Entertaining. The end is coming! Doomsayer, but we've got this reversing switch, so we couldn't care less about a Doomsayer. Uh, I knew it! Blave Zuka. And. Under the circumstances, I think we want Cyanus, just because we've got Leoc out. I'll show them all. <laughs> keep getting in because we're hunter. And what else would we be doing with our lives besides attacking? Alright. Blizzard. So now we're going to have a freezing trap in play. Our dudes are frozen, but we can yeti, steady shot, go ahead and burn off this other charge of Blazooka. If he has another blizzard, obviously that would kind of suck, but hey. I'm okay with him. I'm almost okay with him using a flame strike just because that's massive overkill here. I'd rather him not kill my board off, obviously, because then he's pretty much just dead. Alright, heal bot. Yeah, he's not in a good spot. Uh, He's just throwing anything he can at anything he can. So... <laughs> we keep tossing damage his general direction. We've got this freezing trap to protect. Granted, he gets his heal bot back, but... I've got considerably more than 8 damage on the board, so... That's still fine with me. And that's assuming he attacks before he starts throwing spells at me. He doesn't even know what this secret is, so he may not. What to do? <coughs> what to do? And I'm again, since it's a net positive on damage I can deal to him, I'd rather just keep throwing damage his general direction. And he can't finish off Leoc if he plays a heal bot for seven mana, so yeah. Okay, now that's annoying, but we've still got a healthy chunk of damage. Oh wait, we just got lethal, so who cares? Just quick shot. I mean, this is just sort of what we're hoping for. Grab some quick free wins off early stages of the ladder with an aggro deck until we hit the point where we can actually play a fun deck. 
I mean, aggro, great, it wins. Yeah, I will not contest that, that's why I'm playing it right now, but I do frequently enjoy playing decks with a little more depth than Smash Face Until Dead, repeat. But this will work for now, at least until we get out of the dregs of the early season ladder. Welcome to any new viewers that might have shown up just now. Uh, got something new in the list of viewers. Uh, just laddering a little bit with Hunter. Trying desperately to escape from the bottom of the ladder. It shouldn't be too hard. Uh, I mean, it's been going reasonably well right now, but, you know. His hand is mediocre at best, but I've got a coin into a three drop as a worst case scenario, so I'll probably be running that out next turn, coin spider tank. And these gorilla bots are actually really good against vanish and whatnot. It cuts into my opponent's ability to bounce stuff <coughs> without suffering as a result. Uh, now here I don't want to run out the mech warper, particularly just because I get minimal value if he deadly poisons or zero value if he deadly poisons. But at the same time, it does potentially give us a Yeti on, or a mm. turn three Gorilla Bot. So if he doesn't have the poison, it comes out really oh far God. ahead for us. And if he does, then at least it's out of his hand before we play the bigger threats that are still in our hand for next turn. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get backstab, yeah, backstab dagger. And he's juggling, so he's aggressive ish for a rogue, which is interesting to say the least, but okay. I'm gonna run out this spider tank. Uh, best case scenario, he has to burn multiple cards to kill it, so. Unless he's got some way to make four tokens this turn and get stupidly lucky, but hey. <clears throat> I doubt I'm about to see four one drops. Looks like he's, what, dagger trade? Because I'm perfectly fine with that. Or are we dropping some sort of dude and... Tra I have no idea how he's planning to deal with this, but... Okay, this is looking good for me. No? Are you attacking? I'd love to see you attack that. I'm always good with this situation. Like... Trading a knife juggler that hasn't even gotten a trigger into a spider tank along with taking a hit to the face to kill it. That's very nearly best case scenario. Alright, so here we're just going to drop the gorilla bot. Discover a mech. Oh, right. I don't have a mech. Oh, well. I dirt pretty hard. For some reason, I thought he just had discover a mech on him. This is what happens when you don't pay enough attention when you're building your deck. I... Oh well. I'll live. Mistakes were made. Lessons were learned. Gorilla Bot requires another mech. Got it. That's probably why almost nobody plays it. So many options. But regardless of how my opponent goes after it... Yeah. Okay, looks like he's trading again. Still fine with trades. Drop a shredder, and next turn we'll go for the other gorilla bot. Now that we have a brain stem to work with, unless he swings into the shredder, which is also fine. Like right now, he's just trading boatloads of resources and tons of health, trying to keep my board clean. So unless he's some sort of Reno rogue or something, I expect I'm in a reasonably good place. A Dowdy's mill, and if he is, that seems fine because we like having cards as an aggro deck. Alright. So he's not going after... Is... We are the sword in the shadows. Yeah, it looks like he just wants to try and kill me now. Which is fine. So, I think we Gorilla Bot and then Glaive Zuka. Or we can freeze that thing. I 
I mean, Fell Reaver seems bad against any kind of rogue, so we'll just take another Gorilla Bot to make up for the one we derped on real hard earlier. And then... I kind of like freezing the Shadow Pan Rider and punching him. And let's coin out the Glaivezuka, too. Hopefully that lands right where we wanted it. And we'll just keep going face. Because he looks like he might be setting up for some sort of Blade Flurry combo. And we don't want to just die to Tinker, blade flurry, tinker Attack Blade Flurry. Because we uh, left this Rider with the means to attack us. And next turn we've got... What, five, seven... Okay. We've got two, five... Ten, thirteen. Less. You can leave it in play. I probably don't have thirteen, right? No, he definitely doesn't want to let me kill him. Which is a pity. Alright, yeah, he's just trying to combo me off with some form of... Blade Flurry here. Big Blade Flurry. Which has potential to be a problem, but... I think we start with... Companion. Huffer. So, 6, 9. He stays at 4. Which doesn't seem particularly useful. So... I either get in for 6 this turn, but then don't have lethal next turn, or I force him to keep controlling the board. Except that's not a mech, but we don't care, we just need bodies. Any damage we can get on the board is crucial at this point. We're either dead this turn or we're not, basically. Because if he's got a Tinkers... We're just totally boned. Yeah, and he's still worried about the board. Granted, we're dead next turn. Which means we're dead next turn. Unless we... Quick shot this. Play out some bodies. doesn't have anything, then we are fine. But I assume there's a Blade Flurry in there somewhere and he's just going to go to the face. Uh -huh. well, or he has South Sea Deckhand. That's also fine. Well, this is why we're just playing aggro. We have no idea what our opponents are going to be doing right now, just because it's so random at the lower ranks with the brand new season, it's impossible to predict what you might be up against. And I'm just playing an aggressive deck and trying to punch people in the face. That opening hand was a little rough against a rogue. I would have preferred something involving a Cogmaster into an Anoiltron. Uh, it would have been much more aggressive early start, and I probably would have been okay, but... Alright. So we're getting coin... That hand is mediocre. We're gonna see if we can get something better as far as a sec as far as a mech. No, we can't. But we've still got a draw step. Well, two draw steps really. To make our cogmaster not suck. So we're gonna be going for something along those lines. So we're up against Dragon Priest with a bad hand. I don't actually love this situation. We're going to drop the Cogmaster. The Cogmaster is going to die a horrible death because we don't have a mech. 
but anything that preserves us a little bit while he starts getting rolling is probably better than nothing. Yeah, we're in a world of trouble right now. Uh, I don't feel like I want to run out Freezing Trap just yet. Because neither of those minions cost enough to be worth it. <clears throat> he is going to be drawing too many cards off the Cleric, but there's very little I can do about that until I can get some more relevant bodies out there. Like, say, this turn. Oh, sure, now I have a Clockwork. Uh... But right now I just want to coin into a Shredder and make him start worrying about my board. Because I need him to be reacting, not me be reacting. This deck does not react well. And there's a Twilight Guardian. Alright. So this seems like a great turn for a Freezing Trap, except for the part where we actually kind of want a Gorilla Bot. But I could also Freezing Trap and Steady Shot, which is probably just better, so let's do that. <laughs> and hopefully he swings with the Guardian first, at which point he at least has to burn his... no. So, it's a Cleric getting bounced. And now he's going to kill off my Shredder. Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? He just has every taunt. This game is pretty much over at this point. We have very few ways to handle that much taunting. Uh, I'm going to lead with that. Of course, it's the one that is completely useless right now, or nearly completely useless right now. I mean, I guess I can use it to help kill off these two. But I'm still just dramatically behind on board into a deck with a much stronger late game, so... This is pretty much over. I mean, I'm just... not running into the ideal decks for this situation, am I? We're gonna go ahead and lead on Gorilla Bot. Discover... I have a really hard time not taking this Leaper here. Just because I need stats to fight this guy. So, I think that's where we go with it. And... I guess I clockwork, and... This might as well trade off. Lightwell's interesting. Except for the... Okay, well, it's healing me at least, so... There's that. For That's going to be a problem. In fact, I have no idea how I would possibly deal with Dra Draconic Crusher. Um, especially under the current circumstances. I mean, I can... Glaive Zuka. Kill Guardian. I could Leaper to get to 6 but that's just not killing anything that matters right now. And I'm just dead. If he has literal anything. Which I expect he does. Because his deck has the good late game. Yeah, and there we go. And that's GG for that one. Uh, I'm actually going to take a few minutes break. I've got to handle a couple things and go grab some cancer, and then I will be back shortly. Uh, feel free to stick around, and yeah, I'll be back.
sorry about the delay there. Just had something come up with uh, need to talk about with the roommate. So we will get back to some rank games and animal crackers because animal crackers are shit. Sorry about the crunching. Rexa versus Thrall! For Doomhammer, let the hunt begin. Um, spider tank into Yeti is not bad though. Aside from the part where all his dudes are bigger than mine, but hey, whatever. We do what we can do. Sometimes we just get bad draws. for him to trade with. With just a totem golem. We need to be in something resembling a hurry because this deck with the burn can be a serious problem for us. Alright, since that's not Stone Claw, this turn we're just gonna glaive Zuka and turn we have something like Shredder, Shredder Shot, Big Punch, of course. I assume he gets all the way lucky here. No, actually. This is surprising. I can bounce this Leoc if I want to. Keep it alive. Next turn we can leap or Leoc and bash for 10, 12 next turn, which leaves him well in range of burning out with quick shot and steady shots. So yeah, I don't hate it. What to do? All right. Hex is inconvenient here, but... It is what it is. Stone Claw also slightly inconvenient. I can at least Mech Warper for this, for more Leaper value. drop Leoc here, I'm not getting past Stone Claw with just that, so I feel like I'm still better off going for a steady shot. And then hold 
the Liag for next turn. Unless he has another lightning storm here, we're in a solid place, I think. Yeah. He takes down the Leaper. We can Leoc to have 10, 15 damage this turn. And have not quite enough for the trap, so we're going to. Oh, wait, yeah, 16 damage, so. I think we hold the quick shot for next turn. Then just let him bounce his elemental here because even bouncing and recasting his elemental he's not taking enough of my power off the board okay he's still dead because we've got quick shot and steady shot so who cares you win this yep and that's it all zero game. Anytime. Uh, I don't love having just the Leaper for three. I want to have more mechs out than that, but. I only want one mech out when I drop a Leaper, but. I mean, we've got options because we can always Scientist on three. It's less than ideal use of mana, but it's going to increase our efficiency over the long term. And we just need damage efficiency right now. Okay. Alright, so now we can Mech Warper into Clockwork Gnome. Which gives us a reasonable line of play. Especially if this does not... Do that. But we still needed to go ahead and get that out of the way anyways. Just in case of bad scenarios. And we don't hate the cloak field. I guess I could have left the clockwork in hand so that it wouldn't quite kill that. But then it's in range of literally every spell. So it's kind of a six of one, half a dozen the other scenario. Uh, now, what I can do here, and probably will, is mech warper, leaper... And cloak something. Up. Portals online. Now I can either trade here or I can go to the dome and cloak one of my mech warpers to have it available next turn, which doesn't seem half bad. So let's just go ahead and make sure we've still got a mech warper next turn. Might have been more ideal to get the Leaper, just because that's the only one he can kill without trading. Not entirely sure. But I like... Okay. I wasn't expecting him to scoop quite that early, but I'll take it. Feels a little premature. I guess he's assuming I just had something big in hand that I was going to drop next turn for cheap. But I mean, I was empty-handed. It was definitely early. There was no real reason to do that. I only had 11 points on the board. Two in steady... Sh okay, he was in a lot of trouble, but still. Rexa versus Jaina. You asked for it. Let's the hunt. Alright, uh... So we 
just throw that entire hand back because we desperately want a one drop? And of course we didn't get one, <laughs> which is awkward in this matchup. There we go, Cogmaster. I can fix anything. And now we've got a straight curve that lets us just start punching in the face as quickly as possible. Is he about to ping that? Because if he coin pings, I'm I'll happy. Sinus is also all. perfectly fine, especially since it's about to run face first right, into an Neutron while I'm busy punching him in the face. Uh, he has no efficient line to take care of the Anoyatron with the Cyanus. I guess he does because ping, but that's not what I consider particularly efficient. And I'm fine with that being his line of play, especially if I have another Anoyatron. That lets me... Yeah, I don't really have a great line here. Unless I spider tank, but then he's able to kill that next turn. So yeah, I don't want him to kill my Cogmaster, just because it's a very efficient body in this situation. I assume he's just going to ping punch again, trade off his Secret Keeper. But I'm okay with that. Because it leaves me with a line of play where I drop Yeti next turn. Actually, I think I dropped Spider Tank here. Just in case that's a mirror enemy. It's not. I'll fix you. The next turn we have a pretty clean Metal Tooth Leaper for a boatload of damage. We can Leaper Scientist or Leaper Shot. Probably Leaper Scientist. The end is coming. Okay, so if we Leaper, we're using a lot of that damage to kill off his Doomsayer, but I don't hate that. Just because he has very limited recourse if he suddenly has you. very minimal bodies available. Okay. Now, Duplicate on Doomsayer is kind of spicy. But that just lets us develop our board more so that we don't care too much about a Doomsayer. Uh, if he drops another Doomsayer, we've got enough power to kill it. So he's still in a bad spot for that. Now, if he runs out... Okay, Frost Nimbus. Next turn, we're probably seeing a Blizzard. Or he's just dropping another Doomsayer. Also fine. It's a little frustrating, since we don't have any good options, but we can at least Freezing Trap and Shot this Job turn. Done. Pass it back, lose our guys. And we just wasted a trap because we had that Secret Keeper, or Mad Scientist in play. Bad play, bad play. I admit that. I screwed that one up pretty bad. Oh well. Some still this belcher of his is not going to be the happiest camper when it gets bounced. Because he's going to bounce it trying to attack into up. these guys. Online. He's going to try and get rid of the mech warper and then the trap is going to deal with the belcher. And that's an entire turn replaying it. Which lets me develop my board pretty hard. Unless he's going for the flame strike this turn. Which I suppose is a distinct possibility, but then he runs the risk of running into something good off of the Shredder. Or at least something good enough off of the Shredder. I feel like I should probably get at least one Owl in this deck. I don't want that to be another Duplicate, though. Duplicate's kind of a pain. Ideally, I would hit a Quick Shot here, so I can cycle that off. I can, so I can play the Getty, cycle off a Quick Shot steady if I don't have any other plays. Alright, so he's got at least two down. I don't think I can afford to try too hard to play around them right now. Um. as fast as we can. Uh, I assume at least one of those is Barrier. 
if it's barrier and armor, it could be a little bit tricky. Okay, flame strike. That's fine. Ooh, master swordsmith. I don't mind getting some more attack on my minions, assuming I can draw more minions. Something like that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and punch him down to one before we pop his secrets. Oh look, he's alive. I'm shocked. And then we pass the turn back, and it goes to spider tank, which is perfect. Seeing as our Yeti is pretty close to dead. Alright, yeah, he's hunting for answers at this point. Begging for them, really. And we're still at 30, so I doubt he has nearly as many answers. Yeah, there we go. So this deck seems to be doing exactly what it's intended to. Getting me some rank real quick. Which is fine by me. I'll just rank up a little bit, then switch to more interesting decks after we start playing against normal things that we expect to see. I figure by the time we hit 14, 15, somewhere in there, we start seeing a little more consistency in what we play against, and we can go back to some variant of Reno, or possibly just ramp Druid for a couple of ranks. Uh, I mean, it just sort of depends on what I'm saying. If, speaking of ramp Druid, begin. I need to be getting out there. This is either ramp or combo. Neither of those is going to be a great matchup for me. But this is a solid hand for the matchup. I can... Cogmaster Gnome on one. Glaivezooka two. And... That's assuming he's not jumping out there with a chow or something. <laughs> yeah. My greeting. Greetings, traveler. So yeah, we're just gonna Cogmaster Clockwork. Next turn we either Anoyotron or Glaivezooka, depending on whether he's got a minion this turn. If he's got something out, then we go ahead and Anoyotron. If he doesn't have anything, we Glaivezooka and start rushing him down before he can do too much ramp-wise. Don't want him to get the board out of control on us. Alright, Wrath is fine. I mean, we both sort of get a card out, but it's just my card is really exciting. Oh, that's as exciting as it gets. Uh, so now, instead of Glaivezooka, we're going to run out the Anoyatron because it gives us more damage. The Cogmaster. And then next turn, we either Glaivezooka or Companion. I'm thinking we Glaivezooka. We might companion instead. Yeah, now he's just trying to deal with his Annoyatron. I do kind of like the idea of Blades Glaivezooka this turn. Just to really start punching for a little bit. Alright, and we're going to put this on the Annoyatron, just so that if he has swipe next turn, it doesn't do quite as much as it could otherwise to our damage capabilities, but really right now we're just going to Gorilla Bot next turn no matter what happens. Hell or high water, that's pretty much the plan. I must safeguard. Yeah, so he's got a silence or two damage, two damage, sure. Either way. Uh, but we just want to Gorilla Bot, see what we discover. I mean, I don't hate just running out another Gorilla Bot into this situation. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a huge enough board ever built up to make Leaper as terrifying as it can be. On the other hand, Leapers everywhere isn't bad, so that might be correct. I but I kind of just like being able to replace my card every single turn, too, so... We're going to go ahead and do that, and... Under the circumstances, we're just going to trade this off in case he has a way to taunt it up. We don't need him getting any big minions off of us leaving something alive. We should at least make him work for it. Next turn, we can either Companion or si companion Scientist or Gorilla Bot again. Unless he is able to finish off our Gorilla Bot, in which case that's pretty easy. 
Okay. So he's throwing cards at us like crazy. But we can Mech Warrior Gorilla Bot, which is a great line of play. Especially if we get something crazy like a Faux Reaper 4000 out of it. That's exactly the sort of thing we want in this matchup. Something that actually threatens the sort of stuff a druid is throwing at us. And if our Mech Warrior somehow stays alive, or Mech Warper stays alive for a couple of turns, then we even get it cheaper. Hmm, I wonder. But yeah, I don't hate it. Uh, just because he's a big, fat dude that's also able to hurt things. He can help control the board for us. Uh, so here. Horn. I think I companion. See what I get there. Let that dictate. Alright. So because I get the companion, I think I want to quick shot ancient or quick shot and gorilla bot into ancient just to preserve my mech warper. I mean I probably wanted that line either way, but particularly like it now I am okay. because I've just got all this extra power on the board and this faux reaper gets really stupid with a leoc extra power means extra board control alright swipe is tolerable oh. I must safeguard the land. Alright, so he's finishing off our board. Uh, uh, we can't mech warper into a faux reaper I'll this turn, but we can mech warper, scientist, plate the mech warper just to make it a little bit harder to kill off. And in case we get a quick shot, be closer to drawing cards off of it. Not that we're going to next turn, but you know, keep our grip a little emptier keep pushing him towards zero. I'm hoping I don't see a KT too soon, because KT would be a disaster to deal with for my deck. Like, big dudes are a pain no matter what, but... Okay, another swipe. That's really obnoxious, but we've got the mana for Fogre right away. And that freezing trap is probably not going where he wants it to go. Safety restrictions I mean, online. Well, granted, if he bounces his keeper, we're engaged. in a bad shape, but... Yeah. I mean, he was bouncing it either way, so he's probably going to silence our Faux Reaper. For some weird reason, like, not wanting it to murder him. If he doesn't then we're in a great place, but that's the only correct play for him right now. I can't imagine him doing anything else. What to do? I feel like this is just a no-brainer, and I'm not sure why it's taking him so long to silence it. I mean, I wouldn't even want him running a Sarah into this situation. I must yeah. safeguard the land. So he finally gets around to make the obvious play. Alright, so we're just going to run out a couple of dudes, shot, a bunch of Belcher. Leave him very close to dead next turn force him to have a taunt available, but there's not many taunts that are big enough for me to care about right now, because he's still just massively behind on board. Okay, is he force rolling? No, he's just forcing to the board quick, which is perfectly fine. This means we're ahead on board, and 
Yeah, we like being ahead on him. And now he's going after the Leaper. Just to preserve life total. The two can play at that game. We've got Anoyatron. I mean, now we're just fairly safe from anything he does, uh, unless it's a giant taunt guy. But again, he just needs to run out giant taunts at this point to stay in it. it needs to be bodies that I have to deal with. He's not beating me by dealing with me because I have steady shot. He has to run out things that I have to deal with. And that's the name of the matchup in general. Okay. So force again. And he's just burned off two major win conditions. Trying to keep me from doing anything. I'm going to hold this Leaper just because I've still got mechs in my deck and I'd rather not Where run it out into I nothing. Yeah. I think that would have just been bad. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Oh look, we finally found a spell, now that there's a Lothev in play. Uh, we're still going to run out that Animal Companion because we don't really care, and we were hoping for that to happen. Just to buy us a point of damage or two to get us an extra steady shot or time for a quick shot. Next turn, quick shot plus steady shot is lethal. Uh, we just need to live long enough that he has to, that he dies at this point. Okay, he's restoring health. That slows this down a lot and might give him the game. Except we have Boom. No, he has 14 damage. Yeah, that's just it. We can't win here. Uh, unless he does something incredibly stupid, which is always possible. So let's try to scare him. Shift the turn back and see if he makes the wrong decision. Well played. Oh, he's not just attacking. I'm dead if he attacks. He should attack. Yeah. So he gets the kill, but it happens. Well fought. I can see. And time for yet another game. That's not a great matchup, obviously. Like, I'm trying to run small dudes into a guy who's running out giant dudes fairly early. I mean, Ramp Druid versus something aggressive is just usually pretty good for the Ramp Druid deck. Granted, he's not pure Ramp. That was Force Roar with some Ramp in it, but either way, it's a bad matchup. Alright, we're going to keep the Mech Warrior, or Mech Warper. Toss those back, see what else we can get. That actually just got worse, but not by a ton. And we don't hate running or curving Warper into Shredder. Well, this hand is mediocre. Greetings, traveler. I'm not entirely sure how well we're gonna met. try and I curve this out. Too. Okay, Secret Keeper's really rough here because he's got potential to just outgrow our Warper really fast. Especially since he can potentially be dropping like a humility there. It wrecks our mech warp today. Thankfully it wasn't. But if he has another secret in hand, then our mech warper still just dies. Alright, so he's trying to rush me down. I'm trying to rush him down. The only question is who's rushing is better than who's rushing. And I feel like mine's probably actually in the better position here. Let's not get down. Curious what he's got there because it hasn't affected any of my dudes yet. Reporting for duty. I mean, it must be uh, a repentance or whichever one. Whenever a friendly minion dies, you know that stupid thing. Uh, here, I think we just run out a. Eh, I kind of like companion in hopes of getting a. Okay, well I'll take a Leoc because I will always take a Leoc, and. At this point, I don't hate killing off his secret keeper, which I assume will get back up like that. 
and this one I'm just gonna punch him with because I don't care. It also makes him decide what he wants to try and kill. Alright, that's a creation. It's kind of annoying. But even so, he can't finish off my entire board. And I'm about to have, yeah, one hell of a board compared to his. I couldn't care less about this Seeker Keeper. I've got 11, 16 damage. He's at 13. Or he's at 3 if I do that. So if I go balls deep next turn, he'll be just at 3 life. And there's nothing he can do at that mm. point. Or I cannot go completely balls deep next turn. Just hold up this quick shot. But then I can't cast it the same turn that I boom. So I might as well just go nuts next turn. And then boom on 7. So yeah. Plus if I draw another piece of burn, then he's just dead I without wonder. some way to deal with my board. So let's see what he's got. So that's, as usual, that's what it's coming down to, whether he has the answers or not. Okay. So he's got a 5-5. Five, 6-6. Five, six, six. But it doesn't have Taunt, so yeah, he's killing one of my guys. Succubus is fine. It still does some... Oh wait, do we just have him dead here? Uh, 4, 8, 11, 14... He's not dead now, but he's pretty close to it. Or yeah, bad man. But he's still just, just dead, so I don't care much. Because now, we've got him in one turn. Like, he's dead next turn. That's cute. Well, that wouldn't even save him if. Reporting for duty. The victory is yeah. yours. Yeah. All right, and we are just pushing our way up the ladder, slowly but surely. very efficiently, not very well, but we're doing it. And in time, hopefully we'll get there a little quicker. And, I mean, last season, this season, it's really for me just about getting more familiar with Hearthstone Rexa again before Standard turns into a thing. That's when I really expect to be doing a lot more with this game. Let's the just because begin. I like rotational formats compared to what they've had going. It's an interesting enough game right now, but I feel like it gets much stronger when there's more diversity available due to the rotational format. Oh my god, we are totally boned. That's not a one drop. Yeah, this hand sucks. If this is some sort of Zulak, we're dead. Like, we're so far on the back foot already, it's not even funny. Please tell me that's a chow. Oh, that's a juggler, isn't it? So, I feel like I could really just concede right now and it wouldn't be premature in the slightest. Uh... I mean, I can quick shot that off and not completely hate myself, especially since he cleaned it, but let's face it, this is not a good start for this matchup. The only good news is some of my dudes are a little bit bigger than his until he gets two Doom Guards. And we're just going to my companion. We're going to be really glad that we got something that's just going to die to his peddler. Uh, we'll go to the dome and we'll let him trade his board into it. And then we'll tank next turn. Even better, we can Cogmaster tank, which is really bad against his board, so we won't do it. 
Uh, oh wait, no, it's fine because Cogmaster will still kill off the golem. I'm wondering if I should be running Harvest Golems in this deck just because they're extra bodies that I can metal tooth. Not entirely sure. Especially with the secondary copy of the body glued to it. It's hard to be sure. Okay. Well, that's good at least. I will take a new guard for a spider tank any day, assuming I don't end up dead as a result. Uh, so right now we're just going to run out Eagle Horn and shot here. Kill off his flame imp. Try to draw cards that actually have some impact on the board. Hope he doesn't have another Doom Guard in hand. This is a very bizarre situation. Just because we had the stupidly slow opening hand that now does basically nothing. I'm not entirely sure why he put the alpha there, but we'll take it. Slow down his damage a little bit. Uh, freezing trap is fine here. The only problem is we still don't have a good way to trigger our gorilla bot, and we don't want to just play it on its own if we can help it. Like, everything in our hand only really does things if it does what we want. Now, you might have Power Overwhelming here, like two copies of it. Who knows? I wouldn't be entirely surprised to see Power Overwhelming, Power Overwhelming, Soul Fire or something, which would very nearly kill me. Sure. Yeah, we're just completely toast because this hand is unplayable garbage in this matchup. So, there needs to be any moment for that. My hand was hot garbage. Oh, look. I get to finally do something. Couldn't really get anywhere off that hand. Just a day late and dollar short with the whole, whole hand. Welcome to card games. Uh, this is probably going to be my last match for the day. It's been a fairly short stream, but I don't know. My Got a few things I need to try and get done today, fire. and Let's just feel feeling a little bit headachey, so this will probably be it for now. I mean, that's about the least trash hand I can ask for, I think. At least on the draw, coin out a mech warper and try to go nuts from there. So we're just going to coin out Mech Warper. Drop Clockwork Gnome, now that we have it, too. And then next turn, we've got Spider Tank. Which is generally considered to be a perfectly functional card. Or we can... Glaive Zooka. Uh, I feel like we want to pop here. Pop the shield. Just to clear that off to preserve our Mech Warper, kill with the Glaive Zooka, pump the Mech Warper, and punch. And then next turn we can Gorilla Bot for Valio. Yeah. Reporting for duty. So this turn we just Gorilla Bot for Valio, and we can cloak our Mech Warper? Well, we could, but we can't, so... Gorilla Bot... I mean, that seems kind of funny in the matchup. Except for the part where I don't know if we ever get anywhere near 9 mana. And we're kind of off to a decent start already, so I think we just kind of want the Leaper. Uh, and then we're going to punch one of these. 
just to ensure he has to stay in the tech order to kill it on his current hand. Drop the gnome. Job's done. And then this way we've got most likely we've got probably two mechs out when we leaper. Unless he does that. But even so, next turn, what do we have? Not really a great situation for this gorilla bot. But we can time rewind this gorilla bot. Or we can mech warper into. I mean, I could mech warper something, but I don't like that plan either, unless I'm swinging the gorilla bot into the loot hoarder, which is. Yeah, that's fine. So. Mech warper, spider tank, kill off the loot hoarder. Just to preserve my mech warper until my next turn, unless he has the consecration, but. There's only so many cards I can play around at the same time, and I need to do something aggressive. And if he doesn't consecrate, then I'm dropping Leaper. Which seems pretty good here. Okay, so Leaper is amazing here. Because Leaper lets us clean up his stuff really fast. Uh, so we Yeti, Leaper, Clean up his board real quick, or at least his taunts. Punch the dome for a bunch. And again, hope he doesn't have the consecrate, but even if he does, we've still got power on the board, a fair bit of it. He's low enough that we're starting to get him well into burn range. And if he doesn't have it, then we just kill him next turn with a time rewinder on the leaper. Yeah. So he's not cleaning up the board completely. He's got to have something else, or he's just dead. Okay, so he's going to use that as just a piece of removal real quick. Which seems like a great plan. Except we can... 10, 14... Yeah, we've got him this turn, so... Time rewind around the Leaper. Replay the Leaper. Punch for 14, and shot. And that's the game. Alright, well, thanks for tuning in, anybody. Uh, it's been a uh, short stream. Sorry about that, but I just got a few things I need to get done this afternoon besides streaming, so... Have fun your own games out there, and uh, best of luck to you. Enjoy.